Dare to Live. I am your host, Freddie Zara Jackson, and I'm excited to introduce my guest. It is where psychology comes and meets spirituality. Mr. Paul A. Blake. I'm excited for you to meet him. But first, a message from Choose Life International. 15 years ago, a spark of hope ignited in the hearts of two, Dr. Donovan and Faith Thomas. And today, Choose Life International stands as a beacon of inspiration and transformation. Celebrating 15 years of empowering lives, we've dedicated ourselves to helping people not just exist but truly live. At Choose Life International, we believe in the power of choice the choice to embrace life's journey, to overcome obstacles, and to thrive. For the past 15 years, we've been there for you, providing the support and guidance you need to break free from all limitations. Our dedicated team of mentors, counselors, and volunteers has been the driving force behind our success. Together, we have seen countless lives being transformed. We have witnessed the strength of emerges when we choose life, not just once, but every single day. Through stories of resilience, stories of triumph, and stories of change, we have learned that every life is a story worth celebrating. With Choose Life International, you are never alone on your journey. As we celebrate 15 years, we're not just looking back, but forward to the countless lives we will continue to impact. We implore you to choose life, to be a part of our mission to make the world a brighter, more vibrant place. As we look back on the years, we recognize that God has given us the opportunity to be able to touch lives. Yes, helping people live has been more than just a slogan. We can remember those days of the many people who were suicidal and have gotten help. When I met Dr. Thomas, I was, I believe, 14, around that age, and I was dealing with suicidal issues because of everything that was happening in my life at the time. But to be honest with you, I don't see CLI as therapy. I'd like to think of it as a program which helps you to live. I have seen lives changed. I've seen hope restored. This is such a significant work. And I believe that what we are intending to do as we go global is going to be even more monumental. We are here for purpose. Every person, every person on the planet is here for purpose. And you may feel that you don't have any purpose, but I am here to tell you that you are born for purpose and you can live. You can choose life because there is a purpose for you to exist. And I want to encourage you to choose life. Here's the 15 years of transformation and many more to come. Welcome back to Gear to Live. Mr. Paul A. Blake, thank you for coming. <laughs> it's good to be here. It's good to be here. I am, and I know I say this every week, but I am excited for my guest to meet you. And the message that you have is a very powerful message. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, God is good. Yes, all yes, the time. yes. And I, I believe in the power of people. I believe in the power of prayer, and I believe in the power of God. Yes. And it, you know, it's interesting that I have you know, chosen this particular path because. Yes. If you know where I'm coming from. Right. <laughs> well, you know, you know what? Let us start. Let us start there. Yes. Let's tell our viewers a little bit about you, Mr. Blake. Yeah, I, I was a typical, typical bad boy. Oh. Um, you know, even, even today, when, um, when a lot of my friends from high school meet me, and uh, I'm in ministry, it's like, you seriously? <laughs> you're, 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 in, you're in ministry? 
But I've been actually been minister for over 20 years. Yes. And became yeah. a Christian in 1998. Yeah. And it, I think that was a turning point for me. I yeah. think it's about the best part of my life. <laughs> I didn't start living until then. Yes. And it, it has been a journey. <laughs> it has been a journey. But a very good journey. Yeah. That has led me into, into counseling. I mostly do marriage counseling. Yeah. Uh, marriage counseling is big for me. Yes. And I am in ministry. I don't serve as a full time minister, no, but I am still very heavily involved in ministry. And I am a father. Yeah. I'm a husband and an uncle, <laughs> <laughs> a brother. <laughs> uh, and um, I, I love life. I am enjoying living. That, that's yeah. part of who I am. <laughs> All right. So let us step back just a little bit. Mm -hmm. What happened in 1998? Uh, for me, it, I, I didn't have any, there was not, not dramatic necessarily that happened. Okay. I think I just reached a place where I wanted something different. Yes. Because I, I was used to the partying lifestyle. I mean, I tell people that my weekend used to start from Thursday <laughs> uh, and, and end somewhere early Monday morning. <laughs> yes. And I think I had gotten to the point where I was kind of tired yes. and, and wanted, uh, everything that I did really had little meaning. Yes. Uh, spending money at all of the girls and all of that because yes. that was when dance and parties and I just got the, just tired, just very tired right, and right. I said you know what I think this is deserves a change yes and my brother my younger brother became became a Christian yes and actually he was the one that introduced me to church because I was as far as God from God as <laughs> you could be and interestingly, I went to church one particular Sunday and I heard a particular sermon being preached and I could actually follow from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. And that for me was, uh, was, uh, was uh, really important. And I started Bible study and it took a year before yeah. I made a decision. Yeah. And I remember the true the patience of my mentor. Uh, um, he visited me every Monday at one o'clock. Yes. Religiously for a year. Yes. To the point that I remember sometimes I used to hide. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, when, when, when God is ready for you, yes. uh, there's really nothing you can do. And uh, World Cup 1998 was the day that I got baptized. Oh, <laughs> that is very memorable. Yes, yes. I'll never forget. <laughs> we were actually about to watch the World Cup match. <laughs> and the person who I was doing the Bible study with, who, who's actually a football fan, who used yes. to play for Clarendon College, and we were about to watch a match, and you know, he said to me, do you want to watch the match, or right. do you want to do a Bible study? And my mind said, yes. let's do the Bible study. Wow. And that was how it started. And since then, no turning back. <laughs> and you're telling me that that wasn't dramatic? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was on struck down on the road to Damascus. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, but, you know, I love how God sends persons who are dedicated to um, just to, to, to help the lost mm -hmm. or help the broken, just to help persons, and we all need each other. And that fits very well <laughs> in your book. Exactly, yes. you know, that we, we all need each other because... You know, if, I'm sure you that person has a special place in mm -hmm. your heart. Yeah, true. Yeah. Because and that dedication that he showed you, I'm sure has encouraged you throughout mm -hmm. your journey to be even more dedicated to others. This book is actually dedicated to him. Really? Yeah, he's part of it. Because um, he has been an instrumental person in my life. Uh, his name is Carl Powell. Yes. And I, I, a lot of the decisions that I've made since 1998 was due to his encouragement yes. and his guidance. At some point in time, when I decided even to go into ministry, there were persons within the same church who didn't want me to go into right. ministry, and he was the one that encouraged me. Right. And so I really owe a lot to him. Yes. I, I, love, I love encouraging persons to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God mm -hmm. because not everybody, God doesn't give everybody your vision. True, true, I agree. <laughs> you have to have your vision. Yes. And it's great that God gave um, 
that person you, the vision for your yeah. life and where it is that God was leading yeah. you. Yes. Because if it wasn't for him, and, you, and, and a, a lot of times when we're in the church, we need the support of our fellow brothers and sisters. Yes, true. And when it is that you don't have that support, you know, that one person that's rooting for you makes a difference. Yes, true, true. You know. And the support of family. Yes. My, my family is a, is a big, big part of my life. Um, my brothers, I have three three brothers, one yeah. sister, that's like 13 sisters. <laughs> <laughs> my parents, though they're, they are not together, still be a very big part of my life. So that that, yes. that structure is, is yes. very important. Yes. And I believe also that it is one of the things that led me to write in the book Shepherd and the Flock. Yeah. Because of that, you know, that connection, that community. Yeah. And I think, honestly, I think that is one of the things that's missing in the church. Yeah. The, the spirit of community. There are many persons who go to church but are not necessarily part of the community. Yes. And that, for me, community is important. Yeah. You know, um, maybe this is personal for me, but I find that when I go to church, I have three sons under the age of seven, mm -hmm. so you can imagine that. That is just <laughs> wild. And they're not at the stage yet where they can appreciate. Yeah, what's going on. Yeah. No, no, no. Appreciate <laughs> Sunday school. Yeah. So they're with me. So when I come, I'm so focused on them that I, I'm really not able to get involved, mm -hmm. you know. And then persons are, they're, they're busy getting involved, but I am lost. It's a big church, you know. But thankfully, I have the relationship with God. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of persons, I'm sure, that are like me that don't have that strong relationship and they're just lost. They yeah. don't have the community in church. Yeah, but one, one of the things that Shepherd and the Flock speaks about is we, we do expect people to care for each other in the church, but here's, here's something that is important. You mm -hmm. can't care if you don't know how to care. Yes. Uh, and that is important. We, it's good and well to expect persons to do what God expects us to do. Yes. But unless people are taught to do it, yes. it it's not going to make a difference. Yes. Just think of the different communities that we are coming from. Think of yes. the different broken families that many of us come from. Yes. Think of the trauma that many of us have gone through and now become Christians. And then we are expected to just simply fit in and get, in, get involved in the mission and, and all that. It doesn't work like that. You have to teach people to do stuff. Yeah. Jesus had 12 disciples, yeah. and, and I call them 12 misfits. <laughs> <laughs> and look at the time that Jesus spent with them. Yeah. Look at it. I mean, and even, even after the fact, when he taught them, they still had flaws. Yes. But he was their shepherd, yes. and he cared for them. He, I mean, he was very, very patient with them. Even I don't know if I could be that patient. <laughs> but... And I think he set, he set the standard in terms of what it means to care for people. Right. And unless we take on that shepherding role, then we are just going to have a place of disconnect. Yes. And, and that, it's important for persons to feel as if they are part of the flock. No, <laughs> no, it's true. And, um, you know, really and truly, you know, this is what the community is all about. But let's go back to... Because what I think you're touching on is each individual needs to be healed. Yeah. True. You know, but we also need to be able to recognize um, that we do have an issue. That's right. I like the church onto a hospital. <laughs> yes. Everybody's sick. Yes. Some people are sick unto death. Right. Some people are sick and don't know that they're sick. Right. Some people are going to be sick, but anyway, you put it, it's a hospital. Yes. And all of us need some healing. Yes. At different st As a matter of fact, even when we are healed, we need to heal others. Right. Because in in second Second Corinthians chapter chapter one, when Paul writes to the Corinthian church, he says he greets them with the comfort of God that mm -hmm. he himself was comforted with, mm -hmm. so that he's able to comfort others in their yes. times of distress. Yes. And it's so it's a, it's a chain reaction really. So those of us who find healing within the church in the space where we now become caregivers to yes. others because those persons who you care for now have a responsibility to care for others. Mm -hmm. And if we, if we learn that, then it's not that the church will be free of problems, right. but we'll have more people who are whole. Yes. And that is one of the things that is missing greatly, where yes. persons are not whole. There are persons who come and they are constantly struggling 
and not care. And here's another thing. Can you imagine somebody who doesn't know how to care effectively trying to care for somebody else? Someone had used that term on my <laughs> show and they spoke about bleeding, just bleeding yeah. on other persons. And it's, it, it is, but it is a reality within the church, within the work, but it's just a reality, you know, and, you know, when they have this thing where they say hurt people hurt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that causes bruises, that causes division, that causes a whole... And the truth is sometimes they don't do the best of intentions. <laughs> no, but, no, but why, which is, which is why it is that we need to identify. Yeah. So, let, me, let me give you an example. Think of somebody who is grieving. Mm. Somebody who has lost a dear part of their family. Yes. And you are supposed to encourage that person. And you tell them, the Lord gives and the Lord, Lord takes away. What do you think you are doing? That, that, that seems person? very insensitive. That, that's insensitive. Or all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, who are mm -hmm. called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. Very good Bible verses, but do they Not fit the context? No. And it is done with the best of intention. Right. And that is the very reason why persons need to be taught how to care. Yes. When you look at Job, in, in, in the book of Job, mm -hmm. when Job is in his turmoil, Job's friends came and sat with him for seven days and said nothing. And I think that was the best part of Job's life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> The minute the first one opened his mouth, Job's words started falling apart. And for many, for, me, for many of us, it is best that when we try to care for people, yeah. a part of it is being silent. Yeah. It is just the, the, the most important thing in caring is presence. Yeah. To be present in the moment. Yeah. Say absolutely nothing. Because all that that person is, that person is, is interested in it is to know that somebody is present, somebody mm -hmm. cares. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You speak about empathy in your book. Mm -hmm. And um, tell, us, tell us about you know, how important it is for us to show empathy to one, and to, one to another. Uh, utmost importance. Um, and and you know, let me clarify, because many of us are sympathetic, yes. but not necessarily empathetic. Right. Anybody can feel sorry for anybody. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's natural. It mm -hmm. comes easy. Mm -hmm. But to be empathetic means to be able to place yourself in the person's position. Yes. And it, it, is, it literally means to feel what they feel. Yes. And unless, unless we are able to feel what others feel, we can't connect with them. Yes. yes. And that, that is very important. And it, one of the things that the empathy demands is that you have to literally strip yourself. Mm -hmm. So you have to strip yourself of your, of your assumptions, your presuppositions, you have to, of your arrogance. Judgment. All of that. You, <laughs> yes. you, have, you, you literally have to become almost naked yes. to be able to fit yourself into in what somebody else is going through. Yeah. And it's not, it's not about the fancy words. It's not about the quoting the correct Bible verse. Yes. It is giving yourself over yes. to what this person is feeling. And that is important. That is the best connection that you can make with anybody. Which is why sometimes being silent, especially when you don't, you've never been through, you know, and just being silent yeah, true. is also showing support as well. And trust me, there's not an episode that goes by that I don't encourage my viewers <laughs> to have a relationship with God, the one-on-one, -on -one, because I have always, um, I, I would have the opportunity to be speaking to someone and Holy Spirit said, be quiet. Mm -hmm. Or he would say, okay, ask this or don't do this or, you know, and his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. At that particular yeah. time, it doesn't really make any sense yeah. to me because I had my thoughts going in. And, and we have to trust the process. Uh, mm -hmm. God, God already knows exactly how he wants the situation to turn out. And we must be willing to trust God to do what he does best because he is the one that does it. <laughs> you, you, know, you know, while you're talking, it's God's church. And we as a people, you are right. We need to allow him to do what it is that he, 
how he feels fit mm -hmm. to run his own church. Mm -hmm. True. And we have to submit ourselves completely and wholly to the process. That is it. Trust the process. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, easier said than done. It sounds simple. But it is very difficult because we have pride. We have um, just a lot of things that we have to turtle over. But that's why the word of God cannot be wrong. James says, let every one of you be slow to speak, mm -hmm. quick to listen, mm -hmm. and slow to wrath. We must listen more than we speak. A part of our problem lies in that we always want to have the right answers. And that is one of the reasons why we don't care for people the way that we ought to care yes. for them. We must listen more than we speak. Yes. And in, in psychology, we, we call it active listening. And that, that, again, is part of presence. Yes. Listen without feeling need to interrupt. Listen validating what the other person is saying. Listen with understanding. And, and listen knowing that you don't have all the answers. Yes. In, in the process of caring, one other, we must be able to tell persons that we don't understand. Yes. I don't know. I don't know how you are feeling in this moment, but at least I can be present. Yes. It's not, it's not really about how much I know. It's about being in that space and having that connection where this person can understand that I am here for you and I value how you are feeling. That's it. And there are times when that is enough. It is. It is. It is. Wow. <laughs> I think we stirred up some, some, some um, Christians' hearts and their way of doing things. I think we've given them a challenge, or you have given them mm -hmm. a challenge. But only when we do that can the church become what God wants it to be. And, you know, looking on, you know, like social media now, um, where, you know, the comments, you will post something and the comments are so insensitive. And a lot of times these posts are persons being vulnerable mm -hmm. and the community that they that that the community is not supportive. Unfortunately. Um, for me, I think social media is a kind of toxic space. It is. It and is, and I is. try I try my best only to use it for business. Right. Because if you indulge too much in what is going on i think you lose your mind <laughs> right but, it's, it's, <laughs> but it comes back to again if persons understand that they are being cared for in a particular space mm -hmm. and the caring is real mm -hmm. exactly what god wants it to be then that won't become a problem yeah so yeah. it means that we must invest more in people yes rather than spaces yes <laughs> <laughs> And, yeah. we, and we have to understand that even in the space of social media, a lot of persons, though even even those who make insensitive comments, are also hurting. Oh gosh, yes. And a lot of times it's used as a as a place of venting. Yes. And yes. so we must understand what it means to first hear when you can find real live people, because the truth is social media is just a space. Yeah. Yeah. It's a space for everybody. No, it is. It is. It is. <laughs> and we all have to use it. Well, with everything, use it responsibly. Yeah, use it responsibly. I don't. I don't know if the responsible part is going to <laughs> hit everybody. But no, 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 no. no. But yeah. those who you know, you have written a book, right? And you, there are many lessons in that book. And God has already ordained the individuals to read that book and get that word. You know, and um, it's powerful. Um, so we are, I can't believe this just went by very quickly. <laughs> I must say, though, that I would love to have you back on to speak about marriage because marriage is something that I'm passionate about. No problem. <laughs> no, no problem at all. No problem. But, um, but can you say a word of prayer for our viewers? No problem. Let <laughs> us pray. Holy God, we come before you and we give thanks. For the wonderful God that you are to us. Yes, Lord. We come, O oh God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, knowing that it is because of him why we, are, why we are here. It's not out of the goodness that we have done, but because of your love, your mercy, and your grace. We 
ask oh, God to help us to be good shepherds, help us to be good stewards. We ask your God to help us to have the heart of care that Jesus had for his church. Yes. And we pray, O oh God, that even as we seek to heal, as we seek to care for others, that we may do so, God, understanding that you first cared for us. Father, we know that these are indeed difficult times in which we live. But even in the midst of all those things, O oh God, you ask us to shine our lights in this world so that those who are in darkness may come to know you through us. Help us, O oh God, to be the salt of the earth. Help us to increase our influence, O oh God, so that the gospel of Jesus Christ may spread far and wide and that we may be true examples, true reflections, O oh God, of the love that you have for us. We pray, O oh God, that in everything we do, that all glory, honor, and praise will belong to you. We ask, O oh God, to use us as your instruments, use us as your stewards, as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I can't believe it, but thank you so much, Mr. Blake, for coming uh, on. You are welcome. I, the time just went by so quickly. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for watching Gare to Live. I am your host, Freddie Zara Jackson, and just reminding you to watch Gare to Live this Thursday and every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Gare to Live also rebroadcasts on Saturdays at 6 p.m. And also just reminding you about Choose Life International and their Sunday Zoom webinars at 5 p.m. All right, take care and see you soon. I, 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 I